Rock on. Okay. Um, so we will get started because this is a pretty quick session. Um, and we want to make sure that we can um, cover everything and then also give you all a chance to um, chat. Um, okay, so just a really super quick walk through Zoom. Um, if you haven't been on one of these um, webinars with Zoom before, um, pretty straightforward. Um, we're on video. You can certainly choose to be on video or not. Um, <clears throat> there's a chat function over to the um, right of your screen under more. Um, feel free to write in some chat questions. Um, you can mute yourself or unmute yourself um, and ask a question. Um, we're going to give you all a chance to come in with questions um, sort of halfway through our presentation um, and then at the end too. Um, like I said, we've got a, a little bit of ground to cover, but not too much because we'd like to be able to just open this up for some casual conversation as well. Um, this is being recorded, so you'll have a chance to go back again if you'd like to um, later on afterwards. So let's get started. Um, I can make this happen. Okay, so welcome to awesome communication between marketing and operations and cultivating that at your co-op. So this is certainly something that um, Winston and I have um, had a lot of successes and challenges with um, as we have done a lot of work in lots of different co-ops and what, what does awesome communication actually look like and what does an awesome relationship between operations and marketing look like? Um, it looks like efficiency. It looks like creativity. And it really, really looks like a fantastic customer experience on the floor of the store at the end of the day. And what's really important to remember is that both parties have the same 30,000 foot goals in mind. And those are awesome store sales and achieving those ends at the end of the day. So key to meeting those goals, the high level goals and the day-to-day -day goals is uh, due towards collaboration, mutual support, knowing your role really well as an operator, knowing your role really well as the marketer, um, and what of the work that goes into a promotion concept or a um, event concept is yours to perform and what is yours to um, help shape and what parts are pretty much not yours, you know, that you need to um, entrust and support the marketer on the execution of the vision. And so really knowing when it's means and methods that are, you know, that you have full influence over and um, which what of your skill set is the best way to support the marketer's vision and what is of the marketing team's skill set or uh, uh, array of expertise to support um, the operator's uh, goals and the operator successfully executing the um, product specific or department specific uh, details that will support the overall collaboration and vision of having a wonderful um, customer experience, getting the message, the right message out about the co-op and what the co-op services are, what their products are, and um, making that a fun relationship rather than one that is filled with tension and uncomfortableness. <laughs> So before we go any further, we wanted to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Rebecca Torpy. I'm a marketing and communications consultant with Illuminate, and I'm also um, the full-time marketing manager at Briar Patch Food Co-op out in Grass Valley. Um, as far as my consulting world goes, um, I specialize in interim marketing manager services, um, as well as creating processes that address efficiencies and connect marketing teams to other departments um, of the co-op. My name is Winston Estes. I've worked with uh, retail food co-ops for uh, over 20 years, primarily as a operator um, and also in the support departments of um, the POS oversight and maintenance team oversights and so forth. 
I have really always enjoyed merchandising as a key uh, component of customer service and um, making stores very accessible and useful and uh, enjoyable to our customers. Um, in the last several years, I've also been doing general manager services during times of transition for co-ops with their general managers, and that has uh, reaffirmed and even expanded on my value of an effective marketing team, an effective marketing plan to meet long and short-term goals. So I've seen it from all different angles, and I've actually even had a chance to work with Rebecca as an interim marketing manager at a place where I was the interim general manager, and I can tell you she's very good and it's very fun. It can be very fun to work together. So, so do we introduce ourselves? Um, we thought we would take the opportunity to have you introduce your own roles at the co-op and then describe um, what your relationship is um, in terms of uh, the marketing operation relationship and your perspective on it. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'm Owen Rowe. I'm the board president of the food co-op in Port Townsend. And so, you know, we're really not in either marketing or operations on, on the board. Um, you know, we, we do policy governance, but we do uh, on the board, we have a close relationship and it's been working fairly well with marketing, you know, for board events like uh, the elections, board meetings, annual mm -hmm. meetings just trying to get the word out and, and get the awareness of member owners about uh, those events. So um, anything that can improve that um, is what I'm hoping for today. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm wondering if our participant that was having mic trouble, was he able to call in with the phone? Uh, let's see. Can I show someone? How about Carissa? Carissa, yes. Allowed to talk? Oh, I wonder. She's... There's a dialogue next to her name that says allow to talk. Huh. Doesn't look like she has a microphone. Well, we can certainly move on and. Yep. Cool. All right. See, there's a chat. Let's see. You can see in here, but Mike seems not to be working. Hmm. I'm not really sure how to solve that from here. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, like we said, you know, in order to really achieve our co-ops goals and have that great relationship between ops and marketing, we really need to understand one another. And part of that is really understanding what the, what the goals are of each department. And um, the goals of marketing are of course, to drive sales into our stores. You know, marketing, the marketing department is a revenue driver, as we know. Um, create and seize opportunities to promote the co-op. Marketing's goal is to think creatively and use our marketing chops and our marketing know-how. Um, message internally and externally effectively. We are the expert communicators of our co-op. And marketing's goal, another goal is to support our store operations, of course. We are the producers of the signs and the messages and the business cards. We are the administrative, part of the administrative support staff of the, of the co-op and of the store. And then the, um, one of the other big goals of marketing is, of course, to hold the brand standards. Sometimes that makes us the heavies. Um, of the co-op, but it is our job um, to maintain the style guidelines throughout the co-op. Sorry, there you go. Here we go. And then um, the goals of operations also to meet those sales goals, right? We're all working to make our plan, also known as our budget, 
um, the reality and you have to reach that budget through your store's operations. So we want to drive sales into our stores. We want to have efficiencies. We want to make sure that operations are happening in a effective, safe, predictable, and intelligible manner. Um, and that those operations are coming in within our labor budget. And, uh, you know, so, and to a standard of excellence. Um, we want to make sure that we're staying within whatever the co-op's uh, product standards are. If there's a preference for organics and local and a preference to avoid, you know, color additives or refined sugars, so forth and so on, we're going to be doing that while making sure that we have a, a compelling offering of goods. So those two tensions need to be balanced and well understood. Also work uh, with marketing to make sure that our customers understand what the product standards are and what the, um, the goals of the product uh, operations are. We want to meet our budget and we want to uphold the brand standards. We um, absolutely are the beneficiaries of the brand standards being strong and communicating that we are the leader in the, the market sector that we occupy and that we're the best grocery option for our community. So what we bring to the table, primarily, in addition to our sparkling personalities, is a keen product knowledge, good awareness of product trends, and a um, very smooth, savvy, and well-organized approach to merchandise. All right. And what marketing brings to the table are industry trends. It's marketing's job to keep track of what those trends are in food and grocery and retail. Uh, marketing's role is also to identify what sales strategies are gonna work. Um, they have to stay up to date on those strategies and they have to know what's working. And they also have to try to understand why those strategies are working. Uh, communication skills. Again, marketing is the voice and look and feel of the co-op. They're the drivers of what the co-op is wearing and how the co-op is talking. I just want to support one more thing in, in that last slide about the communication skills, which is also um, the, the marketing team's role is to also assure that um, the operations is being kept up to speed on these strategies as well, whether or not it's a pop-up market or a flash sale or, you know, some sort of, you know, uh, I don't know, coupon scheme that's going to increase, you know, uh, sales and, or, or at least, you know, polish the image of the store within the um, shopping community that we've already achieved. Uh, product can oftentimes just be very focused on the purity of product and pricing strategies and so forth. And sometimes it does take a little effort for marketing to um, pull, pull operators out of their day-to-day -day and pull them back up into the 30,000 view. I think you actually bring a great point and I'm glad that you um, stopped and, and brought that up. Um, that is something that at Briar Patch, we, um, our merchandising manager and I actually spend a lot of time on and it feels like a lot of time, but it actually is worth noting that taking that extra energy to over communicate internally with staff about all of the things that marketing and merchandising or, or whoever plays that merchandising role um, and promotions role um, is doing, it can be hugely beneficial because it makes everybody feel like they're part of that process. Um, and it, it brings everybody along for the ride. And as marketing folks know, um, everybody likes to be involved in marketing and everybody has an opinion about what's going on with marketing. So the more that you can involve them and allow them to feel like they're, they're playing along with everybody and that they have, um, they feel like they have input and that they are having fun along with marketing and the promotions folks and the merchandising folks, the people who have the quote fun jobs, um, it can really go a really, really long way um, in terms of helping marketing's job and merchandising's job do their jobs with them. So thank you for pointing that out. So here we are with the intersection of marketing and operations. What are our common goals? 
So we both commonly want to increase sales in the store and we want to make sure that we are attracting new shoppers as well as um, ensuring a great experience to our current customer base. We also want to ensure um, smooth and excellent store operations, um, that the product is out on the shelf, it's reliably available, it's the right product, it's the product that's hitting on trends, and it's also the right product that we all believe we need to have in our pantries. So a good balance of um, really fun, cutting edge product and those staples that um, we all need in the larder. We definitely all want to meet the budget. That's absolutely everybody's job. It's not just the revenue departments, it's uh, the whole co-op needs to meet that budget. And upholding brand standards, you know, the strength of the co-op is a lot to do with the brand, what, what the co-op stands for in the community and ensuring that all of what we're doing, our merchandising, our product selection, our pricing, and our promotions, our events, are all reinforcing that we are your, the best um, natural foods retailer or cooperative retailer in our, our respective communities. And we all like to, as Rebecca mentioned, you know, I think everybody thinks that, uh, everybody that has primary responsibility for product selection believes that the whole community wants to be involved in every decision about product. <laughs> and everybody that is a marketing uh, team member believes that folks uh, believe that marketing is just really easy. Why don't you just make a sign? Why don't you just do an event? Why don't you just write an article? Um, and so we do have those things where we are the primary expert, but we are not the only influencer over the product decisions or the marketing decisions. It is a gathering of a lot of input and allowing there to be a, a big tent, if you will. And um, the messaging. You know, if your floor staff aren't picking up on what marketing is laying down, the messaging is going to be inconsistent because you'll have your materials and your imaging and your social media saying we are this one thing and then internally the customer will experience something else. So uniformity and good alignment on what our messaging is, is um, clearly it's, it's more in the domain of the marketing team. but. If the marketing team um, is to be successful, they do need the operators to buy in and align. So what is the secret sauce for team functionality? Um, number one, number one, number one, number one is role clarity. Who is responsible for what? Um, is it totally clear that marketing has full ownership of signage and messaging? Um, is it in the job descriptions? It, is it in the decision matrix? Um, is it clear who chooses products for promos? And, and is the rationale for it um, totally clear and, and understandable? Um, is, it a, is it an efficient system um, that you have for that, those kinds of decision making? Um, does the structure for decision making make sense in such a way that it empowers the people who should be empowered to do so easily without a, with a lot of gray area? Um, these are questions that um, do come up quite often, um, especially in, in areas of promotions, um, decision making between marketing and operations and pricing um, I've found in my experience um, and so many times it does come back up to the general manager to, a to ask those questions of the general manager um, and uh, I don't know Winston you've been in, in the IGM role so maybe you want to speak to that a little bit more Yes, I mean, generally, when it's down to who selects the products for supporting promotions, we've also, we know that different co-ops of different sizes, sales volume and maturity may have different systems. Um, and those systems will change through growth. Uh, but if you have a single site co-op, usually the um, product themes are mutually decided upon. And seasonality has a great deal of it. I mean, there's only so much creativity. You can't celebrate watermelon in January, um, or it's difficult at least. <laughs> um, so generally, yes, good role clarity is the you know the um, 
product would stay with operations, but um, theme-wise and how do we want to approach these themes, those guidelines would primarily be with marketing. And of course, the general manager frequently is involved in these things in smaller um, sales volume stores. But once it's larger, generally these uh, patterns and, and processes have already been well scoped and are really clearly defined. Great. Yes. Um, yes, it really does make for a much more nimble process when you have really, really well-defined role clarity and um, accountability um, in those, in those decision-making processes. Um, strong processes for communication. Um, what are your communication processes look like? Are they, do they look like long email chains or do you have really well-structured short meetings to get things done? Um, if there's a miscommunication, um, do you, does your co-op have a culture of going direct? Um, things like that, really kicking the tires on how you communicate with one another can make a huge difference in how you um, function as a team, and I'll just call it, you know, a promo team or a marketing um, ops team. Um, it, make, it makes a big difference because marketing and ops speak, you know, slightly different languages, but you really can, um, you can speak a, 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 com a common language when you do have those sorts of systems in place for great communication and everybody is held to, to account um, when you when you have that kind of culture in place. Um, systems for efficiency. Um, having tools for great promotional planning so that everybody's on the same page and they know what they need um, to have promotional planning done well in advance and they can refer to documentation also makes things a lot uh, go a lot more smoothly between marketing and operations. And then the last thing is a soft skill, but it's super important. Um, do do you know how to active do you have active listening skills in place you know are does everybody know how to acknowledge absorb the information that they're hearing do they reflect it back and are they responding to each other in such a way that the other person really knows what they've heard um, you know it can really be a challenge to learn how to actively listen but it's really worth practicing active listening um, in your in your daily activities at work Huzzah! So, I think, um, Owen, your, uh, your check-in about being a board member, um, yes, I mean, I, marketing has a lot to do with the board, and per, uh, certainly during policy governance, the board communicating to the uh, membership via marketing, that does create um, an opportunity to coordinate with with the marketing team um, through either your general manager or when the general manager delegates that to the marketing manager to work directly with the board members. Rebecca, do you have that system or are you doing that? Yeah. I've, I've worked with um, quite a number of boards in, in the marketing manager capacity. I've done, I've done quite a lot of work with that. So Owen, actually, if you're interested, I actually have, um, we can talk offline and I have quite a few um, sort of protocols for that. If you're if you're interested, I can share them with you. Um, I've worked in policy governance and non-policy governance environments with that. But generally, again, it comes down to what the role clarity is and what the comfort level is um, with the communication level with the communication between the marketing manager and up uh, and the board. Um, as far as the GM goes, but as long as everybody is on the same page, then it always, it works. But everybody just has to have an understanding of what that communication is gonna look like in advance. And that's really how it works the best. But I'm, I'm happy to, um, you know, talk to you offline about that. Thanks. <laughs> so Carissa had uh, added to our chat, and uh, let's say hypothetically the roles are unclear. Well, um, that's that's dangerous territory and that can cause a lot of stress so just out of care and uh, stress relief goals I would say that there really needs to be some clarity um, one process you could use is to just contact other co-ops that have both the operations role or primary merchandiser planning the promotions and the 
um, marketing and just take a look at their job descriptions or, mm -hmm. you know, check in with them about their workflow of like, okay, if there's a big jam up about whether or not February's primary promotion is going to be focused on comfort foods or, you know, I don't know what, what Mardi Gras, <laughs> who makes the decision, right? And I mean, ideally, you have operators that are very commonly focused on these uh, goals. And actually, another thought, Chris, is, you know, I'm, I'm sure we can make this um, PowerPoint uh, available to you. And we can, you know, it's very clear here that both myself and Rebecca think that clarity of roles is absolutely vital in order to have collaboration. You need to know what your role is, what you're bringing to the relationship. And if you don't have clarity on that, it's going to really make a muddle of stuff. So I would either look to other co-ops, uh, follow up with us, um, and our emails are available uh, too, so just to sort of keep on trying to come up with some resources for you. It's the nebulous overlap between the departments that is unclear. Ah. The product departments? The departments between operations and marketing, do you mean? I would say if I, I think the that still probably points to job descriptions at the end of the day. Just because the job descriptions are are what is going to determine what your you know day to day um, duties are going to be ultimately. So if you can identify, if you can hammer out a really clean job description, then the duties will come from the job description. Right. And if it's about product confusion, you know, absolutely everything that is put on deal or on some type of feature doesn't have to be focally promoted. I mean, sometimes there is the reality that in the package world or the wellness world or produce world, there's just a scarcity of, of variety or, you know, um, ideal options for promotion at certain times a year, depending upon where you are in the country. And um, if something's weak, if the produce uh, array of uh, items is weak, de-emphasize them, you know, don't get stuck. Just move with what works sometimes. What did you say, Rebecca? I mean, we just can't all play a strong hand every every time out the out the gate, right? Right. I think that's true. I th think also, um, it, Carissa, I, it doesn't sound like you all have a a, t a team per se, like a an official promotions team. And I'm wondering if sometimes if you develop an actual formal promotions team that actually provides a little more structure for the decision-making process too, rather than just, oh, marketing and operations are gonna get together and decide things. You know, if you actually develop a team, then that gives you the opportunity to develop a charter for that team and more process around what exactly promotions planning is gonna look like. It also gives product a chance to bounce some ideas off of a bigger room and to kind of use that team as almost like a representative, like a little task team representing the views of the ownership so that if you do decide you're, you're uh, throw out there that you want to I don't know promote everything green around St. Patrick's Day everybody can look at you like oh that's a real Lulu we don't think that that's a very strong approach and it's not just one person representing that perspective it's it's a, a group of people that are really trying to do the best job for the co-op they can how about a new item best practice and how each department decides who decides we don't uh, I relied very heavily on the product standards and also what are um, our customers requesting. So if you have a strong customer comment or customer request um, system, that can drive it quite a bit. Um, and uh, I'm also a very conservative person that there has to be a compelling reason to add or eliminate a product because I don't. I think that the customer likes consistency, but they also, they do like trying a brand new kombucha or hard cider. Like you don't want to be left at the 
um, left at the starting line when a new trend is hitting hot. So generally the department managers have the ultimate say, and as long as they have the general managers backing with their typical decision-making practices, it's, it's really their job to meet their sales margin goals and the product is how they're gonna meet those goals. So again, it comes back to job description and talent if they're not good at selecting product then that's not the marketer's fault <laughs> that's a whole different barrel of monkeys yeah okay well we are past our time thank you all very much yeah, I really appreciate everybody joining us. And again, you can follow up with us via email as well if you have some yeah. lingering questions or something occurs to you later on this afternoon and you want to follow up with us. Thanks yes. so much. Thank you.